We had uh, West Liberty and Graham had prom last night, but they're just not doing that anymore this year, I guess, the kids. So, boy, wasn't it beautiful yesterday? We got to enjoy it by going to my son's college graduation and then moving them. So we're pretty tired this morning, so, but, all right. Um, so we're going to start talking about collecting for um, Peru, donations for Peru. Right now, uh, Dodie's asked for markers. Even if you're a teacher and you're getting like end of the school markers, don't throw them away, bring them in. Dodie wants to take markers to Peru, so. But we'll, we'll be uh, talking more about that, okay? Uh, so coming up, or no, no, tonight, or today, after second service, if you're going to Peru, we're having a Peru team meeting. So come back at 1245, and then, oh, Ms. Val's here. Hi, Ms. Val. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then tonight in times class is seven o'clock and then Mother's Day is next weekend so don't forget to bring your hat wear your hat ladies um, um, and then 
the YWAM, te YWAM team is coming up from Louisville in June, June 10th to teach the Pru team drama skits that they're going to do down there. And we want to feed uh, both teams, the Pru team and the, the YWAM team. So that's a lot of people. It's going to be like 60, 70 people. So I'm, I have a sign-up sheet out there. We're going to do like a taco bar. So if you would like to donate food to that, uh, sign up uh, what, you're, what you want to bring. There's different categories on there. And then also Justin is asking if you are interested in helping um, with the food for Mega Week, then get a hold of him, okay? Contact him. And if you need like his phone number or something like that, just get with me or Mark or Chris or somebody, and we'll get it to you, okay? Um, all right. And actually, he'll be here on the 21st. We're having a fundraiser meal, so he'll be here that day. So, all right, let's pray and get started. Father God, you're so good to us. We are loving the sunshine that we had all day yesterday, Father, and we're going to love the rain because we know it's going to bring beautiful flowers, Father, and, and we're, we're just going to be grateful for both. And uh, thank you for giving us such a beautiful day all day, right before we're going to have all this rain. That's, that's not a bad thing. And uh, Lord, be, uh, bless our offering today, Lord, that it's used for your purposes. And Father God, we love to love on you. We want to do it well. Lord, just be here with us in your, the worship of you, that we uh, please you in that. In your precious name, Jesus, amen. Amen. Thanks, Kim. Love you, girl. Um, songs of deliverance that the Bible has. And I bet each and every one of you have your own song of deliverance, don't you? What's the Lord brought you out of? What's he doing in your life? What's he going to do in your life? Uh, he is good, and he is our deliverer. He's our shield, and he's our rock. Let's worship the Lord.
that part that it says you have torn apart the sea. And I always imagine, and he's not going to like it, I say this, but Tim, when the boys were little, and even till today, he may be firm and he may have, you know, guidelines, but if he's seen that those boys are in trouble, he would rip, I mean, he would run. He would go with everything he had to protect those boys. I would too, but it was fierce when he did. And I think God does the same thing. He just tears things apart for you. Do you realize that? You're his child. And that just says something to me. I grew up without a dad. You know, my dad died. And, and so that part is like, Lord, you would do that for me? Let me tell you, he would do it for you. He will tear through anything to go after you, to protect you, to love you. And we need to get that in our hearts. And he brings livelihood to us. And he brings new life into us. He's a God of restoration. He's a father who loves you so much that he would do anything to breathe life into you. To bring dead things back to life. Saturday was silent and surely it was through. Since when has impossible we ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment the Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible we ever stopped you? Open the grave, I'm going out. I'm 
life that comes into us. Today we're talking about God bringing us out of stuff, especially sin and death. He, we are overcomers in Christ. And uh, I love this song because it talk, I just think about over my life. When I've stood upon him, I've had nothing left sometimes but the Lord and stand upon him. And he is my firm foundation. He does not move. He is the same yesterday, today, and always. And he, I can build my life upon him. And I can trust him. And that's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. is my firm foundation the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus he's never So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. I still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going. Yeah, I'm gonna make 
time let's speak his name speak it speak it we'll see things happen because his name is powerful his name is mighty his name is strong for pulling down strongholds in our lives thank you god
Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power. Your name. morning. Speak the name of Jesus. How you doing? Okay? You doing good? Yeah? Name is power. Name is healing. Name is life. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Good to see you. Thanks for coming to church. It's raining out there. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Uh... Big deacon meetings before church today, and, and they're talking about the work that's happening in the deep, deep jungle in Peru. And a church up there called Renewed Stream Church, I don't know if you've heard of, of it before, but uh, 
and the work they're doing up there and the church is growing and, and we're talking about sending some money up there to help, uh, help, help them build a new building because the building they built a few years ago is too small. They, built, they bought the land beside the building and, and uh, it's a little bit low so they're bringing riverbank sand up from the river to fill a, a low area and man they got a big excavation project and a big old new construction thing going and we're excited that Renew Strength 2 is growing too. Renewed Strength 2 in Peru is growing too. So we're happy about all that. Thanks for coming out today. Cinnamon rolls good, Connie? Them good? Yeah. It's kind of distracting during worship, isn't it? You sit, No, no, you sit that cinnamon roll down there and you sing a little. Keep thinking about that cinnamon roll. Father, we thank you for time together today. It's good. Lord, I get up in the morning and check all systems okay. Heartbeat, check. I can see you today, check. Lord, I got you in me, check. Lord, I just wonder someday, Lord, have I ever asked you, how you doing, Lord? How you doing? I hope I haven't disappointed you this week. Hope I haven't not listened. Lord, I hope that your heart's not wounded because uh, we missed you somehow or, or, Lord, we went our own way. So, Father, in all those things, I pray, God, that you'd look upon us, God, and know that we love you. That we're your kids and we don't get it right sometimes, Lord, but we're trying. Trying to find you in everything. Trying to run after you in everything, Lord. My heart, Lord, is to get it right all the time. I pray that our singing blesses you. I pray that our hearts bless you. I pray, God, the words of our mouth and meditations of our heart would please you. I pray this morning, Lord, as we, we attempt to give you the best we got, Lord, that you just fill this place with your spirit, that we, God, that we know we've been in church today. Not because we sang a little and heard some word, but because we felt the presence of God around us lord we need your presence we need your move we need god for you to move on us lord we will live in these days where we ought to be awakened we ought to be on edge we ought to lord be knowing god that that, that it's soon it's soon it's soon so lord awaken us this morning by your word cause us lord to grow and and be changed by it cause the word that was written for us to Lord, to meditate on, to hear, to think about, to consider, Lord, I pray that it would just rip through us today. Help us, Lord, in our spiritual walk. And God, that you'd use me, Lord, in words that I don't even know I'm going to speak. Words from your heart, I pray. So do what you do, Lord. Do what only you can do through, through me today, Lord, or, or however you want to do it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're in John chapter 21. We're kind of in those events between the resurrection and the ascension, right? Some of those events are the big whole chapter here in John 21. Uh, I just see myself all in it. You know, I'm really good at putting myself in the Bible verses, right? I think, I think all these things were written for me. I think the, all these things were written for you, you know, and I can see me in them. I can see me in the mistakes, I can see me in the, the doubts. I can see me in the fears. I can see me in the struggle. But Jesus had appeared to these disciples a couple of times, right? And uh, I don't know what's going on. I really don't. How, 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 can I, how can I say this to you? We're living in real time. We're living in a time where we can watch the news and know that Jesus is coming soon. But we can still get so caught up in our own emotions and our own feelings and our own that somehow we forget all that, right? Isn't that crazy? I mean, you know what I'm saying? How 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 we know, we kind of know the times and the seasons. We kind of know how important stuff is. We kind of know where we are, but at the same time, we can get really caught up in the other stuff. That makes sense to you? 
And after these things, I always like when the, the scripture does that a lot. You know, it, it's referring to all the stuff. I, uh, I, I like that because uh, we, uh, we've had some things this week, right? We've had some things this week. We, uh, I work with the men in the mornings, you know, in my house, and we get out and we work. We, we try to work hard. Jim Morris helped us a bunch with some digging with the backhoe and a big drill bit to drill some big post holes and and uh and all of that that was a blessing but uh we had some stuff this week we had stuff we we had stuff we didn't agree on we had stuff not jim and i but just just in all you know we had stuff that happened we had stuff that broke we had stuff that that didn't go right we had guys that had different agendas we all these things Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. So Jesus is going to show up again. After all this stuff, Jesus is going to keep showing up, right? And I preach that to you. I almost feel like I, you get tired of me with this whole thing. I just think Jesus, in the life of a believer, Jesus will just keep showing up, right? I think the only time that we don't sense or feel Jesus is in those testing seasons. And, I, you know, my, my motto has always been, you know, the teacher doesn't talk during the test. But it's all about teaching. It's all about growing. I, I'm not where I'm supposed to be yet, although I've come a long way from where I was, man. I'm telling you. I'm not where I need, And God's trying to take me into something more. We have 43 people going to Peru. Yeah, and then well, I'm not even counting Jamie and Rebecca. That's 45 that will be there before us. So the most we've ever taken before was 42. So a new world record. Have meetings after church today, and it's exciting. I'm just telling you, it's exciting to know to know that God can use a donkey. You know what I mean? That God can use, right? That God can use if you'll just say, "Lord, use me." Right? Ticket prices are higher than ever. We're all we've done everything we do. I usually have some tricks in my back pocket. You know, hey, we'll go to Detroit and save three hundred dollars a ticket, or we'll we'll go to Cincinnati or Indy or something. You know, we'll figure out a way to get the. But every place is high. I'm going, no! And there's a bigger group than ever. And Jesus just keeps showing up, right? Jesus keeps showing up. He just keeps showing up. I, uh, I, 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 the one thing that I know God will do for me is he'll keep showing up. He'll be faithful to me. God's always been faithful to me. I don't know how the next day is going to go. I don't know how I'm going to get through the next problem. I don't know how I'm going to get through my water problem right now. I just know that Jesus is going to show up. Right? That's all I can say. How would it go? Jesus for my family. Right? Jesus in the streets. Right? Jesus... He's just going to show up. I'm just telling you, I stand here as nobody special. God doesn't love me any more than he loves you. But Jesus is going to show up for me. I'm just telling you, he's not going to leave me alone. He showed himself to me before. That's what that said. He showed himself before, but he wasn't done showing up. You hear me? He'll show up. He'll show up when I need him. I'm his kid. Right? So after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. That's the Sea of Galilee. And this is this way he showed himself. It's funny. And, and I, I, I like that phrase because Jesus doesn't always sh show up the same way. That makes sense? Sometimes Jesus meets a financial need. Sometimes Jesus meets an emotional need. Sometimes Jesus is there to whip my butt. Right? Sometimes Jesus is there to encourage. Sometimes I just feel his spirit and he just refreshes. Right? So we see in this verse that Jesus is going to show up again. And we see that he's going to show up in different ways at different times. Hey, to minister to our need, out of that verse. Simon Peter, Thomas, uh, called the twain, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, two other of his disciples were together. These Jehus, these fishermen got together. Right? Guess what they're going to do? Here's what happened. Here's, I, I try, to, try to talk to the guys in the jail when I went to the jail this week and 
listen, zero to 17 years old, we got programmed. Right? And that's who we are. And I always say, unless Jesus comes in and softens our heart, hey, and the word of God begins to penetrate into our heart, and our heart begins to change our mind, we're programmed, right? And when we're open to spiritual things, God can change us. God literally can change us. Guys that come through my, 150 guys through my house in the last 10 years, you know. And those who wanted Jesus and were open to his word and were open, God spoke, God dealt with their heart, God changed their mind and they're new. They're new creations. They're literally new creations, you know. And we're all supposed to be these new creations, Right? You all understand that? New creation from what? From the programming that we've had in growing up. The new man. You know, the Bible talks about all this stuff. The new guy. How do I become a new guy? The Word of God changes my heart. My heart changes my mind, right? And I begin to be a new person. But you know what? When I'm not thinking about spiritual things, or when I'm discouraged in some way, Or whatever it is that triggers me and whatever, you know what I mean? You know what I do? I revert back to the old programming. Right? Back to the old programming. It's easy for me to get mad. Now, I'll just tell you, I had a bad temper problem growing up. The Lord just taken that away from me. I don't really get mad anymore unless I'm tired and unless <laughs> tired, uh, somebody just irritating the bejeebies out of me, you know what I mean? Hurting, sometimes you get hurting, yeah, you know? The other thing I'm really good at is complaining. I'm a professional, <laughs> professional complainer. I know God doesn't want me to be angry, and I know God doesn't want me to complain, right? And when I'm spiritually minded, hey, I do great. But I can tell in me, I know, th- I know this about me, I know when I start to feel that temperature gauge going up in me, oh, I better start praying. Right? Or I start hearing myself complain because it's just really natural in me, you know what I mean? Uh-oh, I better start praying. Because I'll go back to that old programming every time. I'll go back. God created me to be a new creation, a new creature. I'm not that old guy. I'm not that old guy anymore. I'm a brand new man. I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to follow Jesus through the wild boo yonder. You know, wherever he goes, let's go. I heard too much Stephen Curtis Chapman over the weekend. Saddle up those horses. I got a trail to blaze. I just... Through the wild blue. I think about that. Sometimes I hear that song. I just start thinking about God. I was going this way. And you got my attention. And now I'm going that way Lord. And I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave your side. I don't want to miss you. I am not doing. What I thought my life was supposed to be. This is something I got to. By following Jesus man. I, I, I'm perfectly good. I'm a worker. I'd be perfectly content just working, right? Just working. I don't have the body, hey, the face, the voice to stand on a stage. My mind don't work right half the time. I'm not the smartest guy. I'm not the, I'm just telling you. But God led me to here. And how did I get here? Because I just followed Jesus and we ended up here. Right? And God trying to do the same thing. But I can't, I can't do that in my old programming. Right? And sometimes I know the Apostle Paul talked about beating himself up every day because his flesh was wanted to say, hey, wanted to go back to the old programming. Right? But he knew he was on a new course, a new man, following God in a new way. So here they are. Here's the dinglings, right? After they've been through, how can you, how can you see or be or know or experience any more than they have? They've already seen Jesus. And they're probably, I'm just, in my mind, this is what I'm doing. Hey, the Jesus chapter of my life is over. He gone. I'm glad to know he's alive, right? 
But he hadn't called me to nothing yet. You see, before Jesus ascends, he tells them to go into all the world and preach the gospel. But at this point, they're kind of lost. They ran with him for a couple, three years, you know, and, and they saw and, and they believed it. And it didn't end the way they wanted it to. It wasn't what they thought it was going to be. But he gone. He shows up now and now and again and, and, and scares us to death. He appears in these rooms and we jump out of our skin. He tells us he's alive. I don't know if I'm speaking to you. You know, I... Every time I tell this, this story, I, I'm telling it thinking about you or I'm thinking about me and the story. I, you guys were hanging out together. And you know what's coming, don't you? And Simon Peter, the ringleader of the ding, ding, ding dongs, you know what I mean? Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we'll go with you. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, this sounds funny to me. But I think in their past life, pre-Jesus, they were sick of fishing. That makes sense? They were looking because they jumped out of them boats and followed him. You know what I mean? They were so ready to be done fishing. That, you, you understand that? They were so tired of that old life. Then when Jesus come along, that was so exciting. They, 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 jumped. I'm just telling you, they left those nets on the shore, man. They just went. And they go back to it. I was with one of my guys the other day, and he bought a pack of cigarettes. I just in the store with him. It was nine dollars. I said, "You got out of jail. You hadn't smoked all that time. You get out of jail, you start smoking. You big dummy. Why would you go back to that? You hated it then." You wished you had quit then. Jail made you quit. You know what I mean? Now you get out. First thing you do, I could have punched one of my, we got a new guy. And one of my guys, first thing, when he came to the house, hey, you want a cigarette? Bam. Sure, sure. So the new guy that hadn't smoked all, the, all these months gets a cigarette starts smoking. I'm like. Not, not only is that bad for you, look, look at me, man. I, 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 you know, little Debbie. So what do I got to say? But, <laughs> but it's nine dollars a pack. Listen, dude, I'm talking. To, I'm thinking, talking. It's so easy to go back to who you, who, who you used to be. Even though you might have hated it and you were so glad to jump out of that and follow Jesus, when Jesus came along, it was like a new life. It was like a new beginning. It was the most exciting. Listen, when I met Jesus, that was the most exciting thing ever happened to me. Listen, I just want you to know, I just want you to know something I know is true. And if I stay after him, it doesn't stop being exciting. Right? You hear me? Because for a lot of people... They slowly slide back into the old programming and the excitement of loving Jesus just kind of fades. That makes sense? And then I heard today some people called some other people and said, hey, we're not going to day of training. I'm like, not going to church today because it's raining. Okay, stay at home and do what you used to do on Sunday mornings. Right? See, if you, if you don't stay after God, hey, if you don't stay plugged in, this is my, my opinion. It was God's responsibility to chase me down and make himself known to me. Does that make sense? God made himself known to me. But once he did, he said, follow me. Right? You all get that? And he, he took off. 
And every time I've, I went after him, man, there was something exciting around every, there was, there was something that made my blood pump, there was something going, you know, there was something God was calling me to. It was, it's always been exciting serving Jesus. But when I stopped following him, it all fades. And Jesus just ends up being part of the mix. He just ends up being part of the priorities of my life. One of the things in my life. And generally what I'll do is I'll start just, how do I say this? Showing up for him when it's convenient. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we're going with you also. And they went out immediately and got in a boat. And that night they caught nothing. I love that. Because there's something about a believer, hey, that goes back to the old way and just starts to feel empty. Right? Have you ever said to yourself, this is not where I'm supposed to be? Have you ever got mad at something or got an attitude about something or started complaining about something saying, and said to yourself, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing? This isn't, no, 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 this isn't the new man. This is the old man talking. You shall, and they went out, look, look at this, and immediately got in a boat. I'm just saying, look how easy it was for them to just... Just easy. It doesn't tell a big long story about how they had to find a boat. That how they, it doesn't talk about how hard it was to go back to where they were. It was just easy to go back there. But there was something empty in that. Empty. And when Jesus, but when the morning had come, now come, Jesus stood in the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that something? When we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing, Jesus can be right there and we don't even know he's there, right? We don't see him at all. I get so mad at myself when the Lord was trying to How do you... my wife was listening I've tried to put this together in my head real quick but my wife was listening to something and she said the guy said opportunity I think it's Charlie Daniels I think it was Charlie Daniels he died but opportunity comes knocking very softly. And I, I always thought when I heard that, the Lord comes knocking very softly. And if I'm not tuned up, I can override him. Right? Right? Yet they didn't know that it was Jesus. It's funny how going back to the old ways causes us not to recognize Jesus anymore. Right? Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? He probably said it like this. Children! Because they were out in the water. You know, I always wonder when they put it in English. He knew the answer. That's what's so funny. He, he knew the answer. He knew they hadn't caught nothing. He, he knows I don't catch nothing when I'm doing my own thing either. You know what I'm saying? He knows that.
I, I just want to, I always like to use Mark's paraphrase version. You know what I mean? The, you know, there's King, King James version. There's Mark's paraphrase version. I just want to yell, hey, backsliders! Hey, dummies! You got, you caught something? Are you winning? And they answered, no, <laughs> of course not. See, this is a spiritual thing. I, th this is the day of fishing, you know what I mean? But this is a spiritual, this is, l listen, John records these things because they got a spiritual meaning. Does that make sense? John didn't write just anything. In fact, we may see it at the very, very end today. See, the, John, there were many other things Jesus did. But John wrote these things so that you might understand spiritual things, right? So John doesn't record everything. He just writes, so this whole story, it, you should know that it's all spiritual. It's all about how things work with people, how things work with God and people, right? So we all can connect with this story because it's us. I try not to be super bipolar in my Christian walk. Where one day I listen and the next day I don't. And one day I listen and the next day I don't. You know what I mean? Usually it's on a big, long, gradual curve. You know what I mean? But I know people who one day listen, the next day they don't. I know people that they, they got the, a sine wave going. You know, it's like a heartbeat. It just goes up and down. And I guess the big question in the morning is, are, are you sliding? Are you slipping back to the old guy? Are you catching anything? Are you excited? You, you know, I, I just, just to talk to you, listen, the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. This is the most exciting day. You're, you are a people who know more than any generation has ever known. Listen, we're down to, I'm just saying, we're down looking at the second hand now. We're not looking at years on a calendar or decades on a calendar or centuries on a calendar. We're looking at minutes and seconds now. I'm just telling you, the, the labor pains are, this isn't the time to, this ain't the time to be the old guy anymore. This is the time to say, Lord, where do I buy in at? Where am I at? Lord, I'm getting back to what's my gift. Lord, I, first of all, Lord, forgive me. First of all, Lord, forgive me. I, I went back to that old man. You made me a new man. You made me a new creation, Lord. I'm not going back. Listen, I'm just be honest with you. You've got too much to lose. The finish line, hey, is just ahead. To run this race, some part of your life you know what I mean and to 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 rest now church ought to be spreading right now it ought to be whoa and I'm telling you your church is your church I'm telling you your church this morning made decisions to invest hey in a region of the world where where the gospel's going into a language I've told you that whole story in my daughter's church is a lady translating the Bible, New Testament, into Quechua, right? It's going to the church up in this northern region of Peru where they speak Quechua, right? Hey, and, and that Bible is going into these jungle rivers and tribes and stuff where they've never heard the word of Jesus, never even had it written in their own language. Or your church, your church this morning was, was having a meeting about investing in that church. The name, what's so crazy about it, the name of that church is Renewed Street Church and the pastor's name right now is Marco. Right? Is that the craziest thing ever? We got teenage young people that are going on a trip with us. Hey, and they're going to break away from the group 
the t- big teenage group we got that's going to do ministry in the jungles and to, to break away to go catch up with Jamie, Ke- Rebecca, hey, way out in parts unknown. So we got some young people, 20-year-olds, going to make this big trip. There's no way the whole group could go. No way I could leave the group and go. But we got people in the group that are going to go. Your church is on the front line. Your church is right where we're supposed to be. And somehow, some crazy way, same church name, same pastor name. Crazy. You guys caught anything? You catch any spiritually, you catch anything? Because your net's not in the right place. You're not. If we Right here. The, the, yeah. Paul Habit, as you see this, you see this thing, and you look at that. When I throw my hook in the water, the fish go the other way, right? What are you fishing for? If you're a believer, I, I don't know if you can understand this, but if you're a believer and the Lord's already called you, it's true for everybody. I mean, say it's true. Everybody was created for a godly purpose. But if you're a believer, hey, and you began to walk in that, and you're not doing it, and you expect the Lord to bless something else? And he said to them, cast the net on the right side. It's what he right, the right side the, of the boat and you'll find some. How's he know? Listen, isn't this crazy? This is just a life lesson for everybody. You do it on your own. Hey, you throw that net where you want to throw it. You bring the net back, nothing in it. The whole time the fish were sitting on the other side of the boat, right? The whole time the fish were sitting on the other side of the boat. Isn't that crazy? I mean, isn't that meaning there's a right way to live life? There's a wrong way to live life? There's a right way for you to go now. There's a wrong way for you to go now. There's something for you to go after that's wrong. There's something for you to go after that's right. And, and I, I love the message. You know, it, it, it causes us all to pause and say, you mean those fish were there the whole time? You mean success was there for me the whole time? I just been doing it the wrong way. So, they cast. And now, we're not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. I don't know how to. God blesses hard work. How do I, I, now I want to get this right. There were times in the Bible, like they built that tower to Babel. And they worked hard. In fact, when I studied that real hard, you know, that tower got so high that a brick was of more value. A brick at the top of that tower was of more value than a person. Because if they dropped a brick, it was so so painful, so costly to get that brick made and to get it up that tower that high, they'd rather lose a man than a brick. 
So, their hard work, God blesses hard work. But at some point you start saying, am I doing godly work? Am I doing work that remains? Am I doing what God wants me to do? And maybe, and let me just say it this way, maybe in just doing what I do, the truth is the work that God wants me to do is all around me. And I haven't opened my eyes to that yet. I youth pastored a lot of years and loved it. And I began to work, realize at my work, there were all these hurting people. And I got to the place where they made fun of me. They called me preacher before anybody. But as soon as they had a need, they'd come to my office, shut the door and want me to pray for them. And they'd report back saying... And I'd hear them have conversations about, you ought to have Mark pray for you. Because when he prayed for me, that, that worked. I began to realize that the work that I was doing, hey, making widgets or whatever, you know, the work that I was doing wasn't my purpose. It was the people around me that was my purpose. And I stopped getting mad at the people around me and started to see them as my church. You got you to get some spiritual eyes in where you are. Does that make sense? I, I don't know how to say that to you. And, and you can work hard, but you got to have some spiritual eyes with the work you're doing. You got to have some spiritual eyes. And trust me, the enemy will be right in the middle of that trying to mess it all up. So make sure you, make sure you realize the enemy's right there in the middle of that. So don't. This sounds so crazy. We did see that. That movie this week, Lisa Ward went took Norma. You saw that movie, Norma? I can't believe you saw that movie. Nefarious. It's a. It's put out there as a horror movie. It's rated R, but there's no. It's just the content of it. A prisoner is possessed by the devil, and a psychiatrist, as a non-believer, goes in to interview him to sign off on if he's sane enough to be executed. And I don't want to get too far into that because I can get way down the road. But it's all real. And what that demon-possessed man in that movie recognized was this was this is a big old, even the devil knows this is a big old spiritual battle. In the in the movie, in the movie, he any Christian or he he'd call anything about God the enemy, the demon would. And he would refer to Jesus as the carpenter. And he knew, he knew exactly the battle. He knew exactly what was going on. He knew. It's so funny that, that heaven and hell know there's a battle going on, you know. And us humans walk around, do, 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 not even realizing that. You know? So they put their net in the right place and they caught them some fish. That's exciting to me. You know what that says to me? If I get the God stuff right, I'll be successful. I mean, you, you catch that there? If I, if I put my net in the right place, <laughs> I won't be just wasting my time. That makes sense? To me, that's a, that's a success story. I, I, I mean, that to me, that's the, that's the purpose in, in, 
in what we do, right? Lord, if you'll guide us, we know we'll have success. Well, when we stand before him, he's going to measure that. Am I right? I gave you some talent. What'd you do with the talent? What'd you do with that? Right? I don't know. Did I lose you? Did I lost you? Am I going to have to start singing? And dancing. So they cast where the Lord told them to cast. It was, it was, you know, how wide's the boat? It was six, eight, ten feet from where they were all night. It was the same men, right? Do you understand? It was the same men. It was the same nets. It was the same... I don't know if you get this thing. You have the ability. It's within you to get this thing right, you know, to be to be successful. There's just things you're doing that aren't successful, and there's things if you'll just follow the Lord, they'll be successful. And I, I don't know how you want to live this life, but I'd like to be successful in the things I'm doing. They had to know. They had to know. They had to, they had to be out there. I, you ever just try to fill in the blanks? They had to be out there all night going, where's the fish? Where's the fish? How many times are we pulling this net in? I wonder how many times they pulled that net in at not, that night, you know? How many times they pulled that in? What in the world is going on? You know, we, we do that sometimes because we don't have spiritual understanding. What is going on? Therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. The disciple whom Peter loved was John. Said to Peter, it's the Lord. John said to Peter, hey, it's the Lord, man. Kind of like, we've been here before. We did this before. It's so sad that part of the issue with the human race is, how darn forgetful we are. It's that programming thing, right? It's just that program. We step back to it, right? And he put these outer garment on for removing and plunge in the sea. Now that now we're talking, right? Now we're talking. Finally, finally, finally. Oh, I've been an idiot all night. I'm sorry I used descriptive terms like that. I could see me in it the whole I could see me. Me. There was a bumper sticker out, you know. Men are idiots, and I married the king, right? My wife about bought that one time, and I married their king. You ever heard that? I thought, honey, if that shows up on your bumper, so I'd love to get that. I just fits you. Yeah. But the other disciple came in a little boat. Uh, for they were not far from land, and about 200 cubits dragging the net with fish. Don't worry about that baby. Love babies. Don't worry about baby crying. Love that. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw the fire and the coals there, and fish laid on it in bread. I, I... Jesus already cooking fish. Jesus didn't say, hey! Cast your net on the other side. Catch us some fish. I need some fish in here to. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. So you know what that means is, hey, I'll use what you did too. I'll use your part too. You know, we, we need to understand that Jesus is the primary, right? We're the secondary, and sometimes the Lord will use the secondary. 
And Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish, 153. Now, did you guys just see Joyce Myers got in trouble for what she said that verse meant? Did you see that? Have you seen the controversy on that? I forget what she said. But somebody's out there blasting her because she said something that didn't make any sense to me. But what I've learned about this verse is they caught 153 fish. Why is that number? That was the number of known nations in the day. So they were going to be fish catchers. They were going to be nation changers. They were going to catch some nations, right? That, so that's why it has it. 153 nations. 153 fish. That was the known nations in the, in the world at that time. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. I, I, I like to, I look at that and go, well, what's the big deal about the net not being broken? Why they, and then I say, what are you trying to tell me in that? You, do, do you do that when you're reading the Bible? I, I do that all the time. So, Okay, 153, cool, man. You're giving them some indication about they're going to go to the nations. You know, that's awesome. But their net wasn't broken. What are you trying to say, Lord? Hey. That you'll make it work. That you'll give me strength. Lord, that even when I... Even when it doesn't seem right, God, you'll, you'll help me. I mean, to me, it sounds like they were pulling in more fish than they thought their net could hold, you know. What it, well, first of all, that's an awesome thing that there were more coming than they thought they could handle. But, but that God was in that and that God would support that and God would help them in that and it would be enough. It would be enough. He'd hold it together. Now just think, just think, they drug the nets up on the shore and the nets were breaking. Uh, duh. No, they drug in everything the Lord gave them and their net didn't break. It, to me it's like, Lord, you hold it together. I think about family stuff. You know, I, whatever, you can apply this to anything. Family stuff. Lord, when it's all a stinking mess, Lord... You're, you're going to hold it together. You're going to keep it together. Think about the church sometimes. Lord, when it just gets confusing and it gets hard and it gets this and that and there's this and that going on, and the whole thing, Lord, you'll hold it together. I keep trying to tell you, hey, you better like the people you're sitting with in church. I think you're going to live real close to them for eternity. I just think, I just think God will do it that way. I just think so. I think we'll be neighbors. Right? You'll be known as you're known, right? So, hey, Mike. Say, hey, Mike, how you doing? Right? Someday, hey, Mike, on streets of gold. Hey, Mike, how you doing, brother? It is awesome. What are you doing today? Well, what are you doing today? I mean, think about it. Just think. First of all, you can't say today. Right? Because there's one continuous day. So you wouldn't say, what are you doing today? you just say, what are you doing? Right? And you say, well, I thought I have a couple thousand years. we just go down here and hang out with the church folks, man. Right? We're having a, we're having a backyard party at Connie's house. Right? Heck yeah, let's go. Right? Let's get over there. I didn't know that. Are we, am I invited? Everybody's invited. You know, Connie, everybody's invited. Beth Ann will be a nut over there too. Right? You'll be known as you're known. So, you, I mean, li listen, li listen to me. The Bible never says you get a new brain. Right? Right? You get a new body. Right? That whole thing that you are, you'll still be. That makes it, you think you're going to get to heaven, you'll have a whole new, no, it'd still be you. That, you're, it's going to be you. The 90% of your brain that you're not using, you know, you only use about 10% of your brain. God put another 90% in there for heaven. Yeah. Right? Amen. So we're all going to be geniuses in heaven, but it's going to be us. It's going to be us. 
and the Lord's going to hold it all together. I'm just telling you, the Lord's going to hold it all together. The Lord's going to hold it all together. Jesus said to him, come eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? <laughs> Knowing it was the Lord. I stopped on that verse before and went, what are you saying? I always go back to my old Pentecostal church days. Jesus has the table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people come and dine. You know that thing? Oh, I don't know why that... Hey, come on, eat some breakfast. In the, in the, what it says to me is the Lord cared about their daily needs. That makes sense? He knew they were hungry. He knew they'd been fishing all night. The Lord, before he starts preaching to them, because he's about to kind of put them on them a little bit here, before he starts preaching, you know what he does? He cares for them. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, likewise a fish. Of course he did. This is the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he'd raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, here we go. Here we go. What was the issue? What was the issue? Peter denied him three times. Right? So he had publicly denied him three times. So we're going to get this straightened out. I don't think the Lord likes things to be broken. Does that make sense? If you think the Lord is a Lord who wants to restore, right? He wants things to be... Listen, if, if it's broken between you and the Lord, it's because of you. Because the Lord wants to restore things. You, you get that whole thing? God doesn't want it broken. Simon Peter, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? I'm sure you looked around at the other guys and went. You went fishing with him all night. As soon as he knew it was Jesus, man, he jumped out of that boat. Now, what we miss here, and I don't want to get into this too much. He does this three times to him, but there's different words in the Greek for love, right? So Jesus says, hey, do you love me more than... Do you love me more than anything else there is in the world? And Peter's answer is, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He answered him and said, yes, Lord, I love you with a brother. I love you like a brother. That's what he says. But Jesus asked him, do you love me more than anything? Yes, Lord, you know I love you like a brother. He said, feed my lambs. It happens a couple of times here. And Jesus said to him again the second time, Simon Peter, son of Jonah, do you love me? That, that starts to get kind of hurtful. He said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. See, I just remember that Peter, you know, Peter had messed up, and the Lord was trying to restore him. But Peter, Peter, who do, who do men say that I am? And then, and then he said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter real quick says, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Peter, in his brokenness and his shyness, because he had messed up, you know, but, but I, I just want to tell everybody, listen, if you're messing up, God wants to restore that, and God... God may have to deal with you a couple of times. He has to deal with Peter three times here, right? No, do you really love Peter? Lord, I love you. No, Peter, do you really love me? Lord, I love you. know I love Peter. Do you love me? It's almost like the third time it was like. Tend my sheep. And we could talk about the calling that's there. And he does it again. Feed my sheep. Just trying to read to the end. Most sure I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked wherever you wished. But when you're old, you'll stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you did not wish. Meaning, I'm calling you 
to feed my people. And that's going to be, you know, he ultimately died on a cross upside down, tradition says. And he spoke signifying the death which you would glorify God. And when he said this, he said to him, follow me. Now, I'm out of time. And there's still some really great verses here. What's so hard about following him? Remind you again, just remind you again, you know, what did Jesus say to him? What, when they finally got to the bottom of themselves, finally, and here he is again, you know, got to the bottom of himself. What's, what's Jesus keep calling us to do? Follow me. Seek a may. Right? Seek a may. A scooch a may means listen to me. Sikame means follow me in Spanish. Follow me. What's the Lord want you to do? Follow. What's that mean? You got to get out of that old programming. God created you to be a new creation. Lord, we thank you for time today. We just got to, we come right down to the, the thing we always knew it was, following you. You picked us up out of the miry clay, Lord, and you put our feet upon a rock. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And God, from the beginning, from, the, from minute one, Lord, you wanted me to follow you. Lord, I've done good at times and I've struggled at times. You remind us again here, Lord, you're, go you're going to come after us. For some reason, God, I don't know why. I, I just love you love me enough to stay after me. Thank you. I pray, God, that I'd love you enough that I'd stay after you. I say it again, Lord. My whole job is to follow you. I say it to myself again, Lord. My job is to follow you. Lord, I want nothing else. I want nothing else, Lord. In everything that you've given me, in everything that I am, and every mistake that I've made, Lord, I know I just got to follow you. Somehow in that phrase, Lord, I know you go before me, and I know you take care of me, and I know you provide for me. I try to do it on my own, Lord. I catch nothing. The great big old spiritual story, Lord, fits every single one of us in this room, in this chapter. And I, I say to you again, Lord, I commit myself, Lord, all of my days to follow you. There is none other, Lord, that I can trust like you. None other that would love me like you, Lord. So it's my pleasure, God. It's my great honor, Lord, to follow the Master wherever you go. Help me to, help me to keep my word now, Lord. And don't let me be that old man anymore. Until I see you face to face, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. We love you. Come back and see us as soon as you can. I hope you do. Yeah, 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 yeah.